Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we turn to talking about Obamagate, the ongoing and being currently uncovered corruption and mystery that happened during the former president's administration. Of course, I'm talking about Barack Hussein Obama. Recently, President Trump, our current president, has been coming after his predecessor, and it's been pretty hardcore and telling, and there's been some big accusations being pushed around online. New evidence is coming out as Obama comes out of hiding from his job working at a cushion. Netflix gig, and now Obama's coming out trying to suppress the release of certain documents that could be getting him into trouble. You see, as his administration was wrapping up and he knew Trump was coming in after him, Obama was one of the people that started this witch hunt that's been going on after Trump ever since he became elected. In addition, Obama may have knew about this fake Russia collusion narrative stuff they were trying to pin on Trump at that time too, and even Obama might have wiretapped the president as well. Yes, it turns out Obama isn't as squeaky clean as some might think, and this is an ongoing myth that's been busted year after year since he left office. Many think this guy, Barack, has never done anything wrong, but we can bring up lots of controversies that the media just refuse to cover, like, say, Benghazi, Spygate, Pay for Play, Hillary's lost emails. I mean, the list goes on and on, but apparently the Democrats think if they forget about all these scandals and don't talk about them, it's almost like they didn't happen. And in a way, there is some truth to that since the liberals run all the mainstream media and they control all the outlets. So that means if they do kind of memory hole something, it's almost like it didn't happen. But fortunately, we live in 2020. We live in the modern era. There's plenty of internet and independent reporters out there, independent creators and people commenting like this channel and others. And we can get the message out there and show that Obama is getting exposed and Trump is kind of coming out with a big win here, as you'll soon see. That's why I decided to cover this article today. It's called, What is Obamagate? Everything you need to know about Trump's latest Twitter meltdown. So the plan of attack for these people going after this new Obamagate stuff is they're trying to blame the president, act him, make him look like he's some kind of tinfoil hat wearing guy. They say this is a Twitter meltdown to kind of deride and diminish what he's saying and what he's exposing. And I've seen other outlets do this too. CNN comes to mind. CNN kind of focused on, oh, Trump had a Twitter meltdown. Instead of actually talking about the concrete terrible evidence coming out against Obama and this Obamagate stuff that could be more groundbreaking than the lead on. Let's go ahead and read into this anyway and see where this goes. Former President Barack Obama called the Trump administration's handling of the crisis an absolute chaotic disaster on a private conference call over the weekend, criticizing how Trump has handled the challenges of the virus lockdown and calls for states to reopen. But Trump still seems to be obsessed with the results of the Russia investigation. Okay, this is another funny point. I don't know why the media keeps trying to act like Trump is the one obsessed with this Russia collusion stuff when really he's just responding to years and years of the press accusing him of colluding with Russia. That happened ever since 2016. They've called him Putin's puppet. They've tried to have the Mueller investigation find stuff. That didn't work. They tried to impeach him because of loose connections to other countries. That didn't work. And Trump has been batting that down in response to the media. The media are the ones obsessed with this tr Russia stuff. But it's just funny because I, this is just an ND100 article from The Independent. But I've seen this in other ones too. Trust me. Like, like I was saying, CNN covered this. Other major outlets are playing damage control for the Obama administration. And they seem to be going with the same bullet points. And this Russia investigation one is another one. Like, they act like Trump is the one obsessed with it. It's like, no, we're not obsessed. We're just combating this bad information that you guys are obsessed with slinging at the president. It's, it's a total ridiculous idea. During the phone call, Obama also discussed the case of Michael Flynn, Trump's former national security advisor. The Justice Department in the U.S. said it would be dropping charges against Flynn last week. Flynn was fired by Trump after an emergency had lied to VP Mike Pence about conversations with the Russian ambassador on Obama-era sanctions. So... This is the Flynn part of the story. This is another breaky part of the story because Trump had to fire Flynn because he got wrapped up in this whole fiasco. They tried to frame Flynn back then and say he was lying about something. They tried to get him to turn on Trump. So Trump was forced to force him out. And now it's coming out that Flynn is a hero. He was innocent. He was just kind of a pawn in these greater liberals and their plans, which included Obama at the top coming after Trump. Flynn was just a small player. They tried to turn against him. And now, 
now it's getting exposed. And that's why, again, that's why people like Obama are coming out of the woodwork to talk about this. Because like we said, Obama hasn't been relevant for four years besides making a few Netflix documentaries that he got for free, basically his free money getting given to him by liberal overlords. And besides that, only thing he's popped up for is to bash Trump a little bit, saying he didn't do this right or this right, when who knows what Obama would have done. And then on top of that, now he's coming out to try and defend himself for this corruption that we all know is most likely true. Obama criticized the fact that charges against Flynn had been dropped. Trump popped up over to Twitter to accuse Obama of committing the biggest political crime in American history so far, referring to a tweet sent by a conservative talk show host who claimed that Obama had used the the end of his presidency to sabotage Trump's incoming administration, the biggest political crime in American history so far. And then this is the tweet Trump quoted. It's from Buck Sexton. It says, if you read a news story about some European country where after a fair election, the outgoing president used his last weeks in office to target incoming officials and sabotage the new administration, you'd be appalled. That happened here and half the country thinks it was fine. Okay. Very good points. If anyone else had tried to do this, like, for example, if Trump's tried to sabotage his upcoming successor one day, God forbid it happens this year, but hopefully, you know, one day in four years or maybe even another eight if they extend term limits. But eventually Trump will come out of office. And if he sabotaged his successor, we would never hear the end of it. The mainstream media, the liberals, MSNBC, CNN, they would be rapping on about that day on, day out, day after day, blah, blah, blah. That's all we would hear. But Obama does this and it's okay because Obama never did anything wrong. But that's not the truth. The truth is Obama's not a didn't do nothing. Obama is a person that did a lot, but they just didn't talk about it. They just kissed his butt in the media. They gave him puff pieces. They gave him easy interviews. No one attacked him. Not even the comedy shows like Saturday Night Live or anything. They never said anything negative. They never did any bad interpretations. Obama always came out on top. And that's just going to show why they have this control of the media, of the narrative, of the public presence, and we're trying to combat that with some more facts. And the idea that this is worse than the worst corruption in our country's history, it's definitely possible. I mean, we're not in the middle of it yet. We don't have all the details. We don't know how far it's run, but Obamagate can certainly be considered comparable to Watergate. Watergate, of course, is the famous first kind of gate controversy, and that's why every controversy after Watergate has been added the gate to. And for a little history lesson, for a little flashback, basically Watergate was President Nixon's big kerfuffle. It was a big thing where he got caught spying on his political opponent in his re-election campaign. He was a president back in the 70s. And yes, Nixon ended up resigning because of this. He got caught and then they lied about it and the cover-up got things even worse. So that's why Watergate is his scandal. It caused Nixon to resign. And ever since then, they've had more other scandals. Kind of everything becomes a gate. Russia gate, this gate, that gate. And now we're talking about Obama gate. And if you think about it and you compare those situations, yeah, I could see it being worse. I mean, I could see it being at least just as bad. We don't know all the details, but the idea of just spying on your opponent, I mean, that's one thing. Sure, that's bad. I'm not defending that. But Obama went another step and has tried to sabotage a president. He tried to get him pinned on these fake Russia things. He wiretapped him, which is another thing that was part of, literally part of Watergate. The original scandal was a wiretapping thing. So he already did the same thing Nixon did, plus then some. Then he you know sabotaged this he tried to set up trump he tried to get bad information out there he's trying to frame up flynn all kinds of bad stuff that is just terrible because trump is innocent and he's the only one really trying to help our country here we're going with the conspiracy theory defense here. Uh, Trump continued to tweet about conspiracy theories and other kinds of anti-Obama sentiment, including a tweet which just said Obamagate. It implied that Obama was linked to the FBI's decision to investigate Flynn. Flynn pleaded guilty to lying to Robert Mueller, who was heading the FBI investigation. And then there's Trump's Obamagate tweet. And this is the media here kind of framing up Trump as this conspiracy theorist when really he's kind of just asking questions not to use the old Cartman line too easily but yeah he's just asking questions he's just trying to get the information out there and Obama was definitely far worse for the country than many thought.
Now let's switch to another article that I think has a bit of a more fair take. They're still biased, of course, like most of the media, but this does have some other information. It's called Obamagate Donald Trump Steps Up His Attacks on His Predecessor for Leaked Call Slamming His Chaotic Response. So first Obama comes after Trump, and then Trump claps back with Obamagate stuff. Again, Trump is the one getting blamed for being crazy, even though he's the one responding to someone else who's more crazy. Donald Trump last night stepped up attacks on Obama after his predecessor slammed his response, replying to one tweet claiming that Obama is the first ex-president ever to speak against his successor. Trump wrote, he got caught Obamagate. So here's another good point here. Um, Trump is getting spoken out against by Obama. And typically presidents, outgoing presidents, will have more class and they just kind of retire and quietly go on with their lives. They can still do something, like sometimes they'll write a book, they'll retire to their um, country home, right? They'll always open a presidential library. Um, Usually not anything that's a big deal though, like no uh, political moves, they kind of get out of the life. They have, uh, they've made their point, they've done their political career. They basically are retiring or, you know, quasi retiring with a little bit of a side gig. Sometimes they do speaking. But the one thing they don't do is speak out against their predecessors. It's very bad form. It's negative. It's terrible looking. It just looks like you're a sore winner. It looks like you're a sore loser as well. And this also goes to show why he might sabotage this president, which we're getting into now. It comes after a recording of Obama's half-hour web call with the Obama AI Association leaked on Friday, during which he asserted that Trump's response had been an absolute chaotic disaster. Trump's tweets made reference to last week's dropping of charges against former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn as evidence that Obama had been involved in an impeachment scam. Obama told his alums that dropping of charges against Flynn showed that the Trump administration had put the U.S. law at risk. Okay, so a bit more of a fair take there, less bias and spin and conspiracy theory stuff, but at the same time, it still is kind of... uh, you know, laying out the facts and telling people this is happening. Trump and Obama do not get along. And it makes sense, too, because, again, Trump was very anti-Obama far before this political stuff. And now we're here, and this just shows how bitter and how much, you know, Obama really got hurt by that. And now he's trying to come after Trump, and he's getting caught, and Obamagate is getting exposed, which is great. It's good to hear more stuff about this. I wonder how far the story will actually go, um, because I don't see it. You know, someone people say, oh, what if we get handcuffs? What if we get arrests? What if Obama or Hillary Clinton gets arrested? I'm not sure that'll ever happen. I'm not sure we need or want that to happen. I mean, exposing the bad things they did and charging them with crimes is enough. We can give them uh, whichever punishments depending on how it goes down the road. But yeah, that's we're far from that and we doubt that'll happen. Flynn's case was dropped last week, spurring Obama to tell his alums on Friday that the U.S. rule of law is at risk. Flynn is, of course, the person who was being used by their administration to go after Trump. And then here's his Obamagate tweet again. More stuff about Obamagate. Uh, This kind of reminds me of another one. I don't know if it's on here, if the tweet is on here. But the one other big tweet that I liked was, like, they had their chance. It's a picture like this, and it says on the top, like, it's above Trump. It's like, you investigated me, now I'm investigating you, which I think is a very interesting take because you know it's like yeah trump has been investigated for years now he's like the most investigated president of all time he still come out squeaky clean no crimes no charges against him he never did anything wrong but now we could see that possibly the previous president could be coming into trouble retroactively he got away with stuff in office because he had everyone on his side including the press the mainstream media all that but things could change now that the hat has turned and people are opening up and seeing how bad things really were before we got into the Trump era. Thanks for your time today, guys. Make sure you comment your thoughts on everything below. I'm very curious what you think about this Trump-Obama story about Obamagate, the corruption in the previous administration. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Also, hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you check out our second channel, No BS News, for extra videos and live streams. And until next time, you guys have a great day.